الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن ولا رب يسر وأعين يا كريم وافتح بالحق إنك الفتاح العليم I can almost hear the caterers shaking their fist at me yesterday after the uh, subject that we discussed. I'm sure there were plenty of leftovers. But it is an important subject. <coughs> it might appear a superficial one, and its remedy simple. But although I grumbled about obesity in modern America, uh, it is a problem conspicuously, unmistakably, amongst Muslims as well. differently amongst men and women, but no less acutely. Uh, amongst women, partly because of a certain confinement to the home and the absence of any real tradition of their taking exercise, particularly now that nobody walks and in a traditional Muslim city to get around to visit your parents or whoever you would walk or ride a donkey, which was also quite strenuous in its way. Uh, if you move between cities, by the time you got from Cairo to Baghdad, whichever way you did it, you would be pretty fit. Nowadays, we all glide around in automobiles, and we get pretty bloated as a result. And the traditional frustration of the secluded Muslim wife, uh, working out her frustrations by uh, nibbling at various sweetmeats left around the, the harem, has left many women in a state of very poor health by the time they pass the age of 50. And this is palpably the case whether you go to the subcontinent or to the Middle East. A lot of our older women are in poor physical shape. They get diabetes, they get all kinds of uh, debilitating, depressing diseases. So they, as well as the men, can read these chapters. And amongst the men, the problem is more acute in that sometimes a certain largeness can be equated in Muslim societies with self-esteem. Seems very str strange in the West, but to have a kirsch or a big belly is actually quite a, an impressive thing for uh, an Arab male and in other parts of the Muslim world as well. And if you've lived in those societies, you know that this is the case. You're expected to be taken more seriously if you're physically heavy. And it's got something to do with a set of expectations, forms of self-regard amongst Muslims, uh, that to those of us who have been shaped to whatever degree by the West can seem extremely strange. The abandonment of the traditional diwan in the Arab house and its replacement with a quite appalling sala, a crude rep replica of 18th century decadent French gilded baroque, a room that's incredibly uncomfortable and hardly ever used, but astoundingly expensive, and young couples can save up for 10 years to buy it before they're even allowed to get married. One example of a convention that has become extremely damaging and in which a return to the sunnah would, would have extraordinarily liberative consequences. But the male belly in the Arab world in particular is, is a comparable problem, uh, partly because it's to do with, with a certain type of ego. And also sometimes, having lived in Cairo for a while, because it's, it has certain advantages, particularly if you have to force your way by main force onto public transport. <laughs> if you've seen the, uh, the, the dynamics of what passes for a queue waiting for a bus or a commuter train in the Arab world, you'll see that it's the large people who have the kinetic energy to get them to the front and actually through the, the magic portals to get them to work on time. Um, I once thought of writing a little book of hekam or aphorisms about life in Cairo. And one of them, that it was that Cairo is the survival of the fattest. <laughs> and of course, I stood no chance whatsoever. I, was, I never got anywhere. I had to walk. But it's a serious issue, because this Imam al-Ghazali is not taking us for a ride here when he puts this before all the other vices that he charts in this quarter of the Ihya and the Hadith that he um, deploys and the quite severe statements of the early Muslims deserve to be taken with the utmost seriousness. This is a timeless problem. And we need to address it with, with some seriousness, inshallah.